Hello everyone, I'm Simon Lore, and welcome back to more Magic the Gathering Lore. Let's keep on track with our 8th card of Christmas, which is actually two different cards, Gisa and Giraffe. Ghoul Caller Gisa and Stitcher Giraffe are sibling necromancers from the plane of Innistrad. Both were born in the city of Thraben, and while they may have grown up together, they couldn't be further apart. These siblings hold no love for one another, acting more as rivals than brother and sister. This rivalry stems from the way they practice necromancy, to which they both have their unique styles. Giraffe is a stitcher who is aligned with blue mana. He designs premium zombies and abominations from various different body parts. He stitches these components together and uses science and alchemy to reanimate them and bend them to his command. His sister, on the other hand, is a razor of the deceased, being aligned with black mana. Gisa practices a more traditional form of necromancy, using black spells to reanimate the corpses of those who have already died. Gisa believes that her version of necromancy is the only true way one can practice the delicate art, and that her brother's new fangled necromancy is a disgrace to the craft. On the other hand, Giraffe believes that his sister is stuck in the past, unable to see how superior his custom-made atrocities are. Needless to say, they both are very much insane. As children growing up, they both were fascinated by the death they experienced every day while living on Innistrad. As curious as kids are, they began tapping into the world around them and attempted to manipulate death. At this young age, Gisa discovered her ability to make dead things move, while Giraffe found his stitch work on them to be perfect. As a result of their experiments, a scandal ensued which forced the children to move out into the moorland, which was nothing more than a desolate swamp. What the kids did find in the swamp, however, was an endless supply of dead things to play with. Yet these two just couldn't get over their differences and eventually they parted ways, both taking control of a different half of the moorland. Tension between the siblings has increased over the years, with each trying to prove their superiority over the other. This feud caused both sides to build great undead armies to which they used to settle their dispute. Battles between the two necromancers can be seen throughout the moorland, with severed limbs and mindless survivors serving as markers of the battle scenes. Giraffe had larger ambitions than his sister. He sought to use his creations to take over territory and gain power. Gisa was not as formal. She simply acted off the whims of her own desires. Giraffe even managed to successfully conquer the town of Trostad, killing all the inhabitants and using them as components in his newest creations. Gisa wouldn't let this victory go completely, however. She regularly sent her own monsters to Trostad simply to spite her brother. Giraffe was tired of these games and petty fights and decided to wage formal war on his sister, to which she accepted. Giraffe drafted up a set of rules for them to follow in order to make it a legitimate war, and in an attempt to discover who truly was the best necromancer. Rule 1. No spontaneous awakenings. You cannot further bolster your force once a fight has begun. Rule 2. No luring, killing, or raising of bystanders or livestock. It's unfair for one side to use environmental assistance that is not available to the other. This includes cows. Rule 3. Combatants face off at a predetermined place at a predetermined time. This is to assure a fair battlefield and help regulate rules 1 and 2. Rule 4. Combatants must have at least 3 limbs to play. More than 3 is fine, but you can't have a crawler. And finally, Rule 5. Headquarters are off limits. Never attack a necromancer where he or she sleeps. That's just cruel. These rules fell upon deaf ears as Gisa actively defied the rules of engagement if only to infuriate her brother. But this war did not drag on for the siblings, as it turns out, the conflict brought them together. Giraffe's ambitions got the better of him, discovering that a seam had broken and the town of Theban was open to attack. He went to his sister for help, and the two formed an alliance. Giraffe sneaked into the city where he assassinated the highest priest of the church, and their largest obstacle, Machias. Gisa was responsible for leading the siege, taking control of her brother's scabs along with her traditional zombies. The undead army broke the outer wall of the city before they were forced back by fire, ending the siege in a semi-failure. So there you go, the lore behind Giraffe and Gisa, and the 8th card of Christmas. If you enjoyed the video, Please like and subscribe and make sure you return tomorrow for the next card of Christmas. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.